What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to be continuing our good bug series here on the channel, and we're going to be talking about one of my all time favorite good bugs in the garden the green lacewing. Let's go. Bad bugs, bad bugs, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad bugs, bad bugs. So, when it comes to green lacewings, the reason why they're one of my favorites is because they're so versatile in the garden. Now, we're partnering up with Nature's Good Guys for today's episode, not a sponsored episode, just we really want to get this good information out to you guys about using beneficial insects in the garden. And when I was collaborating with them, I said, one of the ones that I have to do is the green lacewing. And I was really happy to see all of your comments in the past videos, all of you asking about the green lacewing, because I always ask for feedback on how you're liking these episodes, how you're enjoying the series, and pretty much unanimously everyone said, I love the series, I think it's wonderful to talk about, but I would also love to know about green lacewings. And so uh, that's what we're talking about in today's episode. But it is really an insect that if you could imagine like the Batman symbol up in the sky, like if you have pests in the garden, you just need to put like the green lacewing symbol up in the sky. It is such a versatile insect for that exact reason. So whether you have things like spider mites, aphids, thrips, or if you have things like uh, scale, right? Uh, scale is a really hard bodied insect that hugs itself close to the bark on trees and, um, and other like perennial, uh, perennial shrubs and, and ornamentals and stuff like that. Um, really prone to, uh, it's very prone to what's known as gray mold. Basically the, uh, the, the sap that they excrete, it was known as uh, honeydew. And that honeydew that they excrete uh, spawns things like gray mold, downy mildew, uh, really a bad thing in the garden to have things like scale. So they're such a versatile insect for a lot of your harder to control insects, but also they control a lot of the easier ones as well. Like I said, aphids are one of their favorite foods, white flies, spider mites, um, and stuff like that. So they're used very similarly to uh, that of like ladybugs. Um, but they're also on some of your more difficult to, uh, difficult to control insects as well. So I absolutely love them. And what's great is applying them to the garden is also really great as well. Super easy to do because of the fact they're actually native to this region. Um, they're not, uh, you know, they're not like an insect that is very effective but will die off. They actually thrive and live right here in the Midwest. So it's wonderful. It's a great insect to add. And it's also effective in closed quarters areas like greenhouses and uh, other, you know, kind of growing conditions as well, not just the garden. So in our hands here, we have two different dispersal methods of the green lacewing. Um, in my right hand here, I've got the lacewing larvae. This is actually what does the heavy lifting in the garden. Um, these are actually the ready to go, ready to control pest kind of form in the garden. Uh, these are awesome because of the fact that basically once you apply them in the garden, they're kind of like ladybugs. They are hungry and ready to start feeding. So you can basically sprinkle them throughout the garden or put them where there's problem areas and they're, you know, they're gonna start taking care of those problems right away. Now there's a thousand in this little shaker bottle here, but then uh, in my left hand, I have the eggs. Now uh, I have here 2,500 green lacewing eggs. These eggs obviously haven't hatched yet. So once they hatch, then they will become larvae and the larvae then will do the heavy lifting in the garden. So there's a little bit of a kind of a delayed response, but you get a ton more eggs obviously than you do larvae. And what's really nice is the fact that you can, they're stored in rice holes and they're kind of fun to apply because I'll show you, you kind of put them in like a, almost like a little mini Chinese takeout box and you put, put them where there's problem areas in the garden. And then once they hatch, they can instantly go to work there. And that's because, like I said, uh, whether you're going with eggs or instant you know, larvae, uh, they will consume more of the pests than the adults will. The adults don't actually eat that many pests in the garden because their objective is then to just kind of survive, find a mate, and have the life cycle happen all over again. The life cycle of a, uh, of a green lacewing is only about 20 to 30 days, believe it or not. So it's a pretty short life expectancy for an insect that uh, does as much control as it does in the garden. All right, so we're gonna start releasing the green lacewings into the garden. I'm gonna start with these green lacewing larvae here. And it's literally as simple as just shaking the bottle and releasing them. Now, obviously, like I said, you're gonna wanna release them kind of sporadically throughout the garden. So I'm just kind of putting them wherever. Um, I'll probably get over here. Um, you know, our lettuce looks great this year. I mean, our lettuce looks awesome. I mean, check this out, look at this. You guys, I mean, I always talk about how high intensity lettuce really can be a game changer in the garden. Granted, our spinach has gone to seed a little bit, which is not stellar. But what is stellar is our lettuce. This is absolutely beautiful. This looks amazing. So they don't really need any pest control, but it's really just about kind of 
dispersion in the garden and kind of getting their numbers up. I like having a really good population of good bugs in the garden because that way they're gonna do all the heavy lifting if there does become a problem. All right, so these are the teeny tiny little Chinese takeout boxes that we're gonna put the eggs in. Now, they could not be simpler to put together. So basically, all you're gonna do is just take it and just give it a squeeze and then punch it in the bottom. There you go, it's that simple. And then this top right here has a little punch that allows you to just hang it on a branch like that. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eggs with the rice holes and we're going to, let's go, and we're gonna put them in the takeout box. All right, so we're just gonna finish up here by putting the rest in our pear tree. Now, we don't have tremendous pest problems in our trees this year, but it's about having a good population of bugs in the garden, like I said. It's about being preventative. It's about taking the steps to not only mitigate problems, but also prevent problems that aren't yet a problem, right? Like we don't want the bad bugs to get out of control. And so if there are any, this is gonna ensure that any bad bugs that are in the garden are controlled. Now, uh, much like ladybugs and other uh, other predatory insects that you're gonna be applying in your garden as beneficial insect control, or I guess uh, beneficial insect bad bug control, <laughs> um, is that uh, you are going to be giving them a food source with the bad bugs in the garden. If they don't have the food source, they're going to go elsewhere. And so one of the really nice things is that uh, they actually supplied uh, me with one of these here. Now this is the Good Bug Art, uh, Artemia Diet. And basically this lasts for up to 10 weeks, like I said. And essentially this ensures that this will feed the green lace wings once they hatch. So uh, this will feed the green lace wings, the Orias, A. cucurmaeus, and A. swirsky. I'm sure we'll talk about those good bugs <laughs> in later episodes. But basically these are little cards here that you can hang and it essentially has a food for them to feed on just keep them in your garden, keep their populations growing because if they do have a food source, they're gonna stick where that food source is. So um, you can also give them a little bit of that food. So we're gonna put those up in the tree as well, just kind of near where the eggs are. And then when the adults, uh, when the larvae, or when the larvae turn into adults, they're gonna have a food source. But the final thing I wanna talk about is a food source that you can be growing. So you don't necessarily have to use these, you can be growing your own food source. Let's go. All right, so when it comes to planting plants that can actually feed your green lace wings, it couldn't be simpler. Now here we have this dill. Dill's a great example of a plant that once it goes to flower can feed the green, the green lace wings. But any plant that produces an umble, I absolutely love the smell of this dill. Oh, it's amazing. So not only is it gonna be great in the garden, but it's gonna be great for our green lace wings once it goes to flower. But other plants that form umbles, an umble is a large flat flower that is basically a cluster of many other smaller flowers. And uh, there are plants like yarrow, um, dill, carrots, or uh, even fennel. These plants produce the umbels, which produce a lot of pollen. They're very pollen rich flowers. And uh, insects, beneficial insects like ladybugs also really like umbels as well. Um, so you're gonna be attracting multiple beneficial insects by, uh, by growing those types of crops. But there's other crops as well that produce pollen that will attract the green lacewing or at least feed the green lacewing. And you can also plant flowers like asters. Asters produce a pollen that is very protein rich, which is what the, the green lace wings will feed off of in their adult stage so that they can basically uh, continue to multiply in your garden. Because remember, when the green lace wings are in their adult stage, they don't do a whole lot of consumption of pests. They actually do more consumption of pollen, finding a mate, and once they find a mate, they lay eggs. And once they can lay eggs, then that is where the eggs will hatch into the larvae, which do the heavy lifting in the garden. So it's really about just closing that loop and helping that life cycle be sustained in the garden so they're not going elsewhere. But yeah, there's a lot of plants you can be growing, particularly umbels and asters. Stick to those, those are the best ones. But uh, with that, you can sustain a population of green lace wings in your garden. Super great to have in the garden. Definitely a great one because like I said, they do so many, uh, they control so many different pests where it's a very broad spectrum beneficial insect, which I love. But also because of the fact they're native to this region, there's over 30 different species of green lace wings that are native to this region, that there are so many that are gonna be helping your garden become more pest free 
still while in, you know, kind of encouraging that natural ecosystem. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Good Bugs. If you did, make sure to throw a like up there, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments box down below an episode in Good Bugs that you're looking forward to or one that, uh, you know, that you'd like me to, to visit in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye.